Let's get politically incorrect. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to my channel. It feels like every time I turn around, I'm becoming more and more convinced that we should move to Jupiter or Mars. I'm not picky. Because I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but it feels like anti-white rhetoric is alive and well around the world. I mean, we literally just talked about how this is happening in South Africa in a video a couple weeks ago. Literally. And recently, this has been coming out a lot in relation to the two shootings that happened in Texas and Ohio in the last little while, particularly when it comes to the opinions of the media and politicians, which personally, I think speaks to a larger set of issues. So we're gonna discuss them. In the last the last two weeks, CNN got roasted online for posting an article that read, Have you ever noticed the popularity of white robots? The reason for these shades of technological white may be racism, according to new research. Really, Janet? We leave you in charge of the government funding for one day? And this is what you do? Take note, everyone. Janet is not trustworthy with money. Side note as well, how is this even news? Trust CNN to bridge the gap between racism and robots. Fantastic. The research that this article refers to was conducted in New Zealand, which basically tells you everything you need to know. And let me remind you all, someone actually paid scientists to find out if robots are racist. Well, time for a new planet. We tried our best. In this research, we used the shooter bias paradigm and several questionnaires to investigate if people automatically identify robots as being racialized such that we might say that some robots are white while others are Asian or black. Janet, I gotta say, this is not the groundbreaking research I was expecting. We are quite literally talking about hunks of metal that I really hope one day do not take over the planet. And if they do, I hope they look more like Wally rather than Megatron. <laughs> Who even has time for this? Well, me apparently, because I went and read the study for you guys. And actually, to be honest with you, when I started reading through the research paper, I think we got this all wrong. I think the scientists were actually showing people robots who look like people. So that's confusing. And for those of you who don't know, shooter bias basically refers to a racial bias among police officers that gives them a tendency to shoot black civilians rather than white civilians, even when those black civilians are unarmed. And that's a completely separate topic all on its own. For many of us, this entire story and research paper is super funny. Super disconcerting, but mostly super funny. But I personally believe it's fairly indicative of where we're at as a society where basically we are trying to link everything white to racism. Which makes sense because this is not the only story of this kind this month. This story came off the back of a set of articles basically surrounding outrage and animals with white fur. I wish that was a joke, but it's not. For starters, Ivanka Trump bought a puppy. A really, really cute white puppy. As you do, because puppies are adorable. Unless, of course, you're a liberal, in which case puppies are just vessels for racism. How darling, I see you skipped a rescue and went straight to an Aryan breeder. Does it sit and Sieg Heil yet? I mean, I'd say I'm surprised, but trust these people to even ruin pets. An all white dog, shocking. The dog will fit right in, hashtag it's white enough. I'm not going to begrudge you for getting a dog, but damn, that's the most Aryan dog I've ever seen. What? Guys, <laughs> I just... I, um, yep. Imagine being so deranged that you link white animals to Nazism. The funny thing in this case is that had this dog been any other color, like brown or black, then they probably would have equated this to slavery. Please stop this way of thinking immediately. I am scared. But rest assured everyone, it does not stop there. People are accusing the Cats filmmakers of whitewashing Kenyan-born actress Francesca Hayward in the upcoming film adaptation. She's playing a cat. A white cat. From a musical. Playing a character that has traditionally had white fur because it's a cat. Not that I understand this or think it's logical on any level, but apparently the reason people are upset is because you have a black woman playing a non-human character that happens to be white. And it's pretty sad I have to say this, but I hope these people realize that fur color is not the same thing as skin color. Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, I wonder if she was playing like a crocodile 
if that would be considered too green if her entire skin color was green, or if she was playing like an elephant, if she would be considered too gray as an elephant, or is this just a thing because she happens to be playing a cat who's white? My god. How did we get here? Anyway, these ridiculous but no less disconcerting stories and articles roll us back around to the response to the shootings in Texas and Ohio. I know most of you will probably know about this already, so I will just leave some links in the description box for those of you who don't. As expected, these shootings have opened up a brand new debate about white supremacy, white nationalism, what it means, and how we should stop it. Cause you gotta stop that bad whitey from being all supremacisty and whatever. And the other thing that I'm learning here is that these terms differ greatly depending where you are in the world. So that's something to also consider. Before it's too late and white people rise up and turn into the KKK or something. After today, there is no longer any room for nuance. The president is a white nationalist terror leader. His supporters, all of them, are by definition white nationalist terror supporters. The Make America Great Again hat is a KKK hood, and this evil racist scourge must be eradicated from society. During an administration where you have a president who's called Mexicans rapists and criminals, he is a racist and he stokes racism in this country and it does not just offend our sensibilities, it, it fundamentally changes the character of this country and it leads to violence. Then this narrative encourages these sort of posts. White, male, young, American born, Trump admiring, minority hating, gun owning, racist. This is what a terrorist looks like in my country. March against whiteness. Conservatism has a violence problem. Terror and policy, two sides of white nationalism. White power ideology, why El Paso is part of a growing global threat. You get the idea. Now, at least from my objective viewpoint, none of this is helpful. Condemning supremacist attitudes is totally fine if you're gonna do it across the board which never ever seems to be the case, and why would it be? It doesn't fit any particular narrative or agenda. That being said as well, blaming things like white nationalism or white supremacy completely takes the onus off of the shooter and their individual choices and actions. Cause it's 2019, like what even is personal responsibility? I don't think it's helpful to call the president of the United States a racist. I also don't think it's helpful to say that every person who follows that president is also a racist and that white Americans and Trump supporters happen to be the people who are more likely to commit terror attacks. Not helpful. And we've actually talked about this exact topic before already on this channel. So you guys already know what's up. I also don't think selectively reporting particular information in relation to tragedies in order to push a particular viewpoint or narrative is helpful. For example, one shooter apparently had white supremacist views while the other one held a lot of hardcore regressive leftist views. But assigning blame to all of us because we happen to share something as arbitrary and uncontrollable as skin color is completely absurd. And I see two major things happening as a result. The first thing is that by attacking white nationalism and by extension the white population, what you end up creating is more white nationalism and more white supremacy. The last thing our society needs is for white people to feel more tribal. The result of this tribalism will not be a catharsis of white identity, improving equality for non-whites. It will be resentment towards being the only tribe not given special treatment bestowed by victimhood. And I dare say that resentment will also be the result of feeling constantly blamed for all the ills in society by every other group. And as a result, predominantly young white people will react to the social and educational structures that make them out to be the embodiment of terrorism and evil and push them towards, you guessed it, white supremacy. The secondary issue that I see coming off the back of all of this is the fact that the media and politicians and activists and so on make it seem justifiable and okay to attack not only the president, but his supporters. And conservatives and white people, because apparently we're all evil. I partially think this is why, at least to some extent, no one's really concerned, bothered, or upset when Caucasians are targeted simply for being Caucasian. We just don't have enough melanin to elicit concern. The hostility drummed up by the media and particularly left-wing politicians is probably also why people feel justified in going and attacking Trump supporters, no matter the color of their skin. Don't vote Trump! <laughs> Don't vote Trump! Don't vote Trump! Don't vote Trump. Don't vote Trump. Don't vote Trump. Don't vote Trump. 
after the attack of this New York City art gallery owner by more than a dozen teens. It left him covered in bruises. You see right there, blood vessels broken in his eye. Sixth grader attacked on his school bus for wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Also not helpful, but in the end, the onus for terror attacks sits squarely on the shoulders of the individual. Not Trump, not conservatives, not white people, but the individual. These events should not turn into a free-for-all by the media and politicians against a particular racial group, especially when the majority of that group abhor and fundamentally reject violence. And rather than fanning the flames of hostility and aggression and radicalism by forcing particular prejudices and discriminatory attitudes underground, maybe we should be addressing them at their core. Because all this is doing is creating angrier people who are going to take that anger out on others. I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again because, you know, everyone likes becoming a broken record. But you do not fight radicalism and extremism by shunning it and by shaming people. You fight it by addressing it where it starts. What a concept. Personally, I'm getting pretty sick of this anti-white narrative that seems to have taken root, particularly in the United States, because I don't think it's helpful. I don't think it's going to lead anywhere positive, and if anything, I think it's going to exacerbate racial tensions. But as with anything, I just don't see it ending anytime soon. So what do you all think? Do you believe that the media is actually making racial tensions worse? Do you think that blaming white nationalism and white supremacy for terror attacks is the way to go? And what do you generally make of this issue as a whole? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you want to leave a comment, feel free to do so. Just be respectful about it. And I will see you guys next time.